Okay, welcome to another video. I am the Starman, and welcome to Sunny Lydon. <coughs> I'm in Sunny Lydon today, and the reason why I'm here is because uh, this is where I'm going to be, at last, I'm going to be doing my deep space video. But I'm not going to be uh, doing the uh, shoot on the boardwalk, because if you're going to be doing deep space astrophotography, you want to have your rig set up on a solid surface, either on concrete or, or even even on grass. So I'm certainly not going to be doing it on this uh, on this boardwalk, but I will show you around the area just so you can get an idea for whereabouts I am and the kind of conditions um, as regards to light pollution. I'm just going to show you around and I'll, and. and just to give you an idea of what we're up against when we're trying to take pictures of deep space. Uh, the, the target that I'm going to go for tonight is in Orion. It's just underneath the three belt stars of Orion. And it's the famous Orion Nebula. You've probably heard of it. And if you have a look at Orion, which is a winter constellation, it'll be very high up, um, sort of mid-evening now in the Northern Hemisphere. And you can see a fuzzy patch just underneath the three belt stars. I'll show you a picture now on the screen. The thing is, if I was to shoot this at home, I'd have a nightmare because I'm in the middle of town. So what I've done is I've come out here just to get away from the main sources of light pollution. Being in the middle of a town, at least here, I'm looking out over an estuary. So I'm just going to show you what's on the other side of that estuary now. Right, OK, so this is the Rubble Estuary. And you can see where the sun's going down over there. It's going down towards the southwest. Just about here we've got Southport. A bit further down than Southport is Liverpool. Now you can imagine there's quite a, a lot of light that comes from a city like Liverpool. So we're going to be aiming straight over that. Over here we'll have Manchester area. We're looking towards the southeast now. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to show you a picture on the screen now of the light pollution that we're going to be dealing with here. Right, OK, so I've now come off the jetty and I'm now on a little path here uh, next to the um, RNLI. This is Mark. Say hello, Mark. Hiya. I'm joined by my friend Mark here. And um, I'm just going to show you how I've set up here now because I'm going to actually take the picture from this particular spot here. So I'll just show you how I'm set up. OK, so there's my tripod there. Okay, so I'm now going to show you my setup, how I've got the rig set up for this shot of the Orion Nebula later on. Like I said, Orion is going to rise up here tonight, it's going to cross the southern meridian at its highest point, and that's when I'm going to try and capture it using this setup right here. And on top of the tripod, I have a Fornax light track here. On top of the Fornax light track, I have a, a Benro ball head, and on top of the ball head, I have, of course, the camera. This here is the polar scope, which will have to be aligned with the North Star, which is somewhere up there. So this polar scope will need to be accurately aligned with the North Star to be able to do some long exposure deep space photography using this lens. Now the lens is a pretty good lens actually. It is a Nikon 300mm f4. Yeah, so the lens is actually a pretty good lens. It's an old one. It was about £350, so not particularly cheap. Uh, but, you know, it's fair, fairly um, good lens for the price. Uh, you can get these second-hand on eBay. Um, and I think that this is going to be a really good lens to do this uh, particular shot of the Orion Nebula. This power pack here, which powers the, uh, which powers the mount. Nice little power pack. Um, 8 amp hours, uh, it's a tracer, really really good, lasts for a long time. There's just one more thing that's fairly important when you're out shooting at night and that is dew. You can get dew on your lens. Now I haven't got a, I've not got a, a heater band, I've not got any heater bands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this small towel on the lens and it'll just help to keep off the dew just in case it's really, really damp because dew is a big, big problem for, for lenses when you're out shooting at night. 
and um, something like this will just help to keep the dew off for a while it won't it won't keep it off forever but uh, ideally what you really need is heater bands so that's something that i really need to invest in if i'm going to keep doing this yeah so that's it that's it i'm all set up here now all set up now so now all we need to do is to wait for the darkness to fall so bring on the night Okay, so I've now come back and it's nice and dark and it's uh, it's pretty clear as well. It's not perfect. There's a few murky looking clouds. So what I'll do is, um, I'll just show you my rig. I've got my rig set up here and I've got the cloth on it <clears throat> to stop the dew on the lens. It's, it's all set up just as I showed before. It's all set up. It's facing towards the south. Um, all I need to do now is just make sure that the lens is pointing directly towards where I want it to be and that's the Orion Nebula. I'll show you that in a moment but first of all I'm going to show you a photograph of what I can see towards the southern sky. Orion's very high up in the sky and that's where I'm aiming for, that's the most important thing. I'll show you that and I'll also, I'll also show you the area where the Orion Nebula is where I'm going to be uh, zooming in on for this first shot. Okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of where the Orion Nebula is. And now, what I need to do is I need to um, manoeuvre my camera on the mount so that it faces uh, as close as possible to the Orion Nebula and try and get it centred as well. So I'll try and talk you through that right now. Right, okay, I hope you can see this. I've now got my screen pointing towards the three belt stars of Orion. So one there, one there, and one there and I'm going to use the belt stars of Orion to find the Orion Nebula because they show up quite well in the screen and all I need to do now is manoeuvre the camera straight down because as you can see from the photograph that's where the Orion Nebula is so let's have a go at that okay so I'm just moving the camera down now and can you see how there's this group of stars here and I think we can just about make out the nebula there right there where the box is that's where the Orion Nebula is so if I lock the camera there now we will be right on the Orion Nebula so let's do that then okay so I've just taken my first test picture taken at one minute ISO 1600 and f4 which is the maximum speed of this 300 millimeter lens that I'm using and it looks pretty good let's have a look okay, let's have a look at this test shot of the Orion Nebula this looks pretty good this Oh, look at this. Look, there it is. Let's zoom in. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow, how is that? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That's uh, a test shot. Um, I gave you the settings there just to uh, see how everything was and check there was no clouds around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take 10 frames using that exposure with the idea to stack them in post using software. That's probably coming in another video. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the intervalometer to take 10 frames of the Orion Nebula at that setting and then we'll see how those come out at the end. Okay, so another thing about the Orion Nebula is you might notice that there's a very bright core to it and it's a star forming region. There's a very young stars all packed together. 
and the, the problem with when you're imaging it is that um, this part of the nebula blows out so what I've done to counteract that is I've taken another series of 10 exposures but using half of the exposure of the first one so I've taken 10 more at 30 seconds and I'm going to use those in post to try to to blend in to the uh, the original shot so that I can pull back some of the blown highlight on the the bright part of the Orion Nebula okay so I've got some really really nice frames of the Orion Nebula there so I'm actually feeling quite lucky uh, it's not perfectly clear uh, but I'm going to have a go at another target and that is it's a couple of targets actually it's a flame nebula and the horsehead nebula and uh, they are situated just near the left hand belt star of Orion so I'll just show you how I'm going to frame this shot up now right okay so I've now framed the three belt stars of Orion in the frame you see here so one there one in the box and one up there so that's Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka up here on the right hand side now we want to be zooming in on this star here Alnitak because that's where the flame and horsehead nebula are very close to so I'm going to line the shot up I'm going to centre Alnitak in the box so we get the best possible picture right so hopefully you can see I've aligned Alnitak so that Alnitak is now dead centre of the frame. The thing about the targets we're aiming for now, the Horsehead and Flame Nebula, is that um, certainly the Horsehead Nebula is going to require quite a bit longer exposure to get a decent shot of it because it's, uh, it's uh, a red emission nebula and it's very very faint. It's nowhere near as bright as what the Orion Nebula is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the exposure, not too much, I'm going to give it uh, 90 seconds instead of one minute so I'm going to bump up the exposure to 90 seconds and I'm going to take the same number of frames as what I did for the Orion Nebula I'm going to take 10 frames so let's see how we do with that right okay so here we are I'll just zoom in a little bit you can see the um, hopefully you can see all the belt stars there they're all the belt stars of Orion and this is the one we want to zoom in on here Alnitak and um, you might just be able to see there's something going on here to the left of the star that's the flame nebula just zoom in a little bit more can you see that you'll see this better at the end of the video by the way that's a flame nebula and that is looking pretty good now the whole side nebula is somewhere down here somewhere down here and I've definitely got something I can see something you might not be able to see it there but there's definitely some sort of something going on there uh, so what I'll do, I'll sort that out in the uh, post. Okay, so I don't think I've done too bad tonight. I've got um, images of the Orion Nebula, and I think I've got some half-decent images of the Flame and Horsehead Nebula. Now my lens is starting to fog up now, so uh, I'm going to have to call it a night. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you right now, and I'm going to show you the before and after pictures so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the pictures that as they came out of the camera and I'm also going to leave you with the images after I've processed them hope you enjoy the pictures and I hope you've learned something maybe picked something up hopefully some tips on deep space imaging and I'll see you again on the next video